Father, I praise you with all of my heart. I ask, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would lead us and guide us and direct us. I know, Holy Spirit, that you are speaking and leading your churches worldwide every moment. And Lord, I thank you that you would count us in amongst the faithful. We're only faithful, Lord, because of the work and, and the leading that you give to us every day. Without you, Lord, we are totally lost. And so we boast in you. We bring glory to your name and say, Hosanna, Hosanna to the highest, to you, Lord. May you rule and you reign over all nations, all kingdoms. For yours is the honor, it's the power, it's the glory forever and ever. In the name of Jesus, we pray, Father. Amen. Government was their God. In Genesis chapter 10, verse 8 through 12, in Genesis chapter 10, verse 8 through 12, it says, Cush begot Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one on the earth. Nimrod was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Therefore it is said, like Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, Erech, Akkad, and Kelna, in the land of Shinar. From that land he went to Assyria and built Nineveh, Rehoboth, Ur and Kala, and resin between Nineveh and Kala, that is the principal city. In the Bible, where we hear of the first ruler in government, the first ruler on the earth to rule over men. His name was Nimrod. Uh, Jewish writings, historical writings, say that Nimrod was a very wicked man that he, he had sexual relations with his uh, incest, with his sisters, with his mother. He was a very, very wicked person. And uh, he, from what I understand also, that he was involved in, in cannibalism and just the wicked, wickedest things of the earth. And he began to rule over men uh, by force. And he is the one that founded the town of Babel, which we know as Babylon. Babel means uh, confusion, where, where God came down later on and struck that city, the men with different languages, and knocked down their tower that they were building to glorify themselves. And so, who was behind this push? Who was behind this great move of these men staying together? See, because the call of God was, was to go out and fill and multiply the earth. And there was someone, somebody, something telling these men, no, don't do that. And they were staying put. One language, one ruler, one thought, one purpose. And that is what we see in the beginning with Nimrod. It is what we see with the building of Babylon, Babel, and these other towns as well. He built not just one, but many cities. And he was, uh, if, we can also, if we can kind of maybe say this, he was the first ruler with the spirit of Antichrist. And so it was very early on, and he began to rule. And from that point on, the hearts of men were always looking to men to lead them, never looking to God. Because years later, in 1 Samuel, we see that the children of Israel they do not want judges, prophets over them. You know, prophets were, were the judges. And they judged the things of, according to, 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 to the things of God over the people. They did not rule over them, and so to speak, as a king, an emperor, a dictator would. But they would, they would judge them. They would, they would direct them in the affairs of God, in all things of the nation. But Israel began to look to the left and look to the right. And they began to see how the other nations were wicked, because these other wicked nations had traditions passed down onto them by who? By Nimrod. By the Gentiles. And they, they had men ruling over them. And that was never the design of God for men to rule over us, but men to lead us. There's a difference between ruling and leading. And so this first began with the nations. They were ruling, not leading. God was trying to show a major difference between ruling and leading. And you see, that's why in America, we were successful from the beginning. And you've got to hear this. 
We had people put in place not to rule us, but to what? To lead us. And because it was by God's design, things went so well in this nation for so many years. Yes, we had to deal with the issue of slavery. Yes, we've had to deal with the issue of so many things. And again, I will say America has never been a Christian nation. Really? What nation has been a Christian nation? Really? What, what nation has? But America did follow the design of the Bible where we put men in place to lead us, not to rule us. But by the time the children of Israel look and they see these other nations with rulers, they tell Samuel in 1 Samuel 8, 4 through 20, they had never had a, a ruler in the nation of Israel ever. They had judges. They had the prophets judging things, leading them. Look, verse 4. Then all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah and said to him, Look! You are old, Samuel, and your sons do not walk in your ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. So Samuel prayed to the Lord, and the Lord said to Samuel, Heed the voice of the people in all that they say to you. For they have not rejected you, Samuel, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them, according to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought them up out of Egypt and even to this day with which they have forsaken me and served other gods. So they are doing to you also. Now, therefore, heed their voice. However, you shall solemnly forewarn them and show them the behavior of the king who will rule, reign over them. So Samuel told all the words of the Lord to the people who asked him for a king. And he said, this will be the behavior of the king's not just king, I believe, but kings who will reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them for his own chariots and to be his horsemen, and some will run before his chariots. He will appoint captains over his thousands and captains over his fifties. He will set some to plow his ground and to reap his harvest, and some to make his weapons of war and equipment for his chariots. He will take your daughters to be perfumers, cooks, and bakers. He will take the best of your fields, your vineyards, and your olive groves, and give them to his servants. He will take a tenth of your grain and your vintage and give it to his officers and servants, and he will make take your male servants, your female servants, your finest young men and your donkeys and put them to his work. He will take a tenth of your sheep and you will be his servants and you will cry out in that day because of your king whom you have chosen for yourselves and the Lord will not hear you in that day. Nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel. They said, no, but we will take a king over us that we may also be like the nations and that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. Wow. Isn't it the Lord Jesus who is supposed to go out before us and fight for us? And we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus who strengthens us. Amen? We are a Christian nation, a royal priesthood, all over the world, spread throughout the nations, trying to to show them the light of Christ, the gospel of Christ, that this is the way God intended for humanity to follow. Not just the way of salvation, but also for the way of government. Now, there's a difference between leading and ruling, and they wanted to be ruled, not led. Not led. We get mad because we see today politicians in America ruling, not leading. Because what is happening is we are seeing a transition of government in America to socialism, to communism. And, and, and just do your homework, like I said Friday night. History teaches us that communist and socialism forms of government, no one has ever prospered under those governments except for those rulers. But millions and millions of people died. But you see, how does that become implemented in America? A nation that was never founded in that form of a government. Well, it happens over a slow period of time. And that is what we see happening time and time and time again. You see, the truth is, is that all nations are headed to a form of communism. Why? Because of one man who will eventually rule the world because it was Satan's plan from the beginning with Nimrod. Revelation 13, 16 through 18 says this, he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand 
or their foreheads, and that no one may buy, sell, except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. Now we are familiar with this, that one day you will not be able to to operate in any form of government in any society unless you have been branded by the man who has the final spirit of Antichrist. And that is what all the nations are geared toward, to ushering in a final Antichrist. You have to understand that. The globalists, the elitists, the wealthy, and even the poor, rich, slave, they're all looking for redemption because it has been revealed that when humanity fell from the Garden of Eden, that we chose to disobey God and that our hearts became filled with sin and therefore, that is the flaw, uh, that, that is the, the wrong thing that we, is, that we have inherited when we inherited the sin nature, is that we always look to men for redemption. We always look to men, and therefore, when we always look to men, we always look to resources. We always look to opportunities. If I only win the lottery, amen? Somebody got rich last night. Amen? But... The Bible says that they come and they go. And there, what will you do next? Your riches are, nothing is wrong with riches in this world. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were rich. But they honored God with their wealth. Abel honored God with his wealth. There's nothing wrong with being rich. There's nothing wrong with being poor. But to be in the peace and in the safety of the Lord Jesus Christ, that is what matters. Now, you can do a lot with money, but you can do a lot more with faith in God. And that is what Satan sees. He wants us to have faith in everything but God. And how does this apply in government? Well, look at the children of Israel. They looked around, just like Peter. He was walking on water, looked to the left and looked to the right, and he began to sink. When you take your eyes off of the Lord, you begin to fail. And that applies to everyday life and everything in your life. Let's talk about governments. Look, God chose prophets to lead as judges, but man wanted kings to rule over them. Kings that will take from you. Now we, say now, we see now more than ever, the government is taking from us. When did this begin? I believe this began really, truly, in World War II. With all the social issues that came up under the Roosevelt administration, the form of, of, of social security, uh, government health care, all of this. You know who used to take care of the people in America before World War II? It was the church. It was the church. It was the church's responsibility. But the church walked away from that after World War II and all these, the civil engineers program came in. All these programs put people to work. And it was all now, now you're going to, the taxes went up. And all of a sudden, now you owe the rulers. We went from being a government that was led by people to now being ruled by people. And we see it now, right? We see it now. And so when rulers rule, people suffer. The Bible talks about that. There's a scripture for that. And so when you have wicked people in office that rule, the people suffer. And more and more wicked people are taking office and they're ruling and they're pushing the agenda. And this has been happening for so many years now in this nation. You know, I cannot speak for other nations because I don't live in other nations. But it's also happening in those nations as well. You know, we, we think how, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll think of other nations. For example, Islamic nations. Today, you go over there, you'll get your head cut off as a Christian. But it was not always like that. The, the hostility towards Christianity was not always like that in Islamic nations. But as the wicked began to really get set in place of these, of these Islamic nations, then just like in America, more and more evil has risen and has taken over society. And we look at America... What we are witnessing is a demonic force leading people to come together under one rule. You know, yesterday I was told that if you have any guns, well, a while back I was told if you have any guns, 
you can go in uh, downtown Houston, near downtown at Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. You can go and give your gun, and they'll give you a gift card for $100, $150, depending on what kind of gun you had. Uh, broken guns, $50. And the purpose for this is to get all guns off the street that are not legal or whatever that is. And Well, you know, I'm like, okay, well, I have one that doesn't work. And they say, well, broken guns, welcome to. We'll take, well, you know what? I mean, here you go. But when I went over there, I'm not kidding, four miles long of cars in one single line, thousands of cars lining up to turn in broken guns. Nobody's going to turn in their five, six, seven, eight hundred dollar gun for a hundred dollar gift card. They were all turning in broken guns. And I'm telling you, Ann and I witnessed it with our own eyes. Thousands upon thousands of cars for hours. I drove by there. I said, I'll never get in that line. <laughs> and I drove right off. So I'm not going to waste my time doing that. But what is the point of all of this? You see in our nation, you know, a gun can kill you. A rock can kill you. A rock can help you. You know, I mean... That if you really think about it, this building is built by rocks. <laughs> you know, this building is built by wood. And those things can kill you too if you're using the wrong way. And so can a gun. It can kill you if you use it the wrong way. But what is behind the rock? What is behind the, 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 the wood? What is behind the, the gun? That is the problem. And the problem is the heart of man. The heart of this nation. And so when people move further and further away from Jesus Christ, they're open to other things, spiritual things, that is. And so what we are witnessing in this nation is a demonic force leading people to come together under one rule. And how do you do that? How do you prepare the most, the, the most how do you say it, freest nation? Is that a word I could use? The most freest nation in the history of the world. The most richest nation in the history of the world. The most prosperous nations, nation in such a short period of time in the history of the world. We have to pay attention to that. You may not like America. You may not like what America did in the past for their actions. No nation is perfect. But we as Christians should pay attention to what is happening in America. Because, why? Because it is an indicator of where we are in the end times. And so as America, as America falls, so will the rest of the Western nations. They too will fall. All of their allies shall fall. And what is the allies? Israel. What are the other allies? France. Germ uh, Germany. Japan. South Korea. The Philippines. I mean, we think about all these nations that are an ally with the United States. If America falls, what will happen to those nations? And how are we falling? It's, it's one thing to fall, but you need to listen to this, please. It's what made you fall. And see, what, what, make, what will make America fall is what will infect the rest of the nations too. And what we see is it is a demonic attack in this nation to pull us away from the things of God and to open up to immorality on an unprecedented scale that has never been seen before. And that is what is happening in this nation. We are seeing racial hate once again. You see, socialists and communists, they do not believe in Jesus or in any other religious belief. I had to write these notes down so I wouldn't forget because this is such an important message. You see, their God is themselves. It's government. And that is the direction that many politicians in America are leading or directing this country towards. Whether you like it or not, that is what is happening. So what do we do as Christians? Well, look, we'll get to that in just a minute. Look at the evils in the world. We can go on and on and on about the evils in the world. You know, oh, we just got over the... Um, oh, we've, we've been dealing with COVID-19. And now, oh gosh, you know, hey... Some people got, have the, uh, the, the shot. Some people do not have it. But, you know, it's not in the news like it used to be. Now all of a sudden the monkey pox is here. And, uh, but you can only get it, if, if, you know, and the, the actual truth is that monkey pox is passed through homosexual activity. That's where it's passed through. But yet, 
the government is saying everyone needs to get a monkeypox shot. I mean, it, it's just, you know, it's after, after medical doctors, and, and I'm speaking about facts here, medical doctors in our nation, from the White House on down, through the Trump administration, through the Biden administration, they have directly and deliberately, they have lied to the American people about COVID-19. They've lied to us. The first thing they all said was, if you get the vaccine, that you will not get COVID-19. You'll be immune from it. Do you remember that? And it's changed throughout the months and weeks. And now it's, well, if you get it, you'll get it, but it won't be as severe. That's a lie. They knew that from the beginning. So many other things that, that they have lied about. So why? It's because as a nation, we're being directed to conform to one ideology, do as you're told, taking away your, 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 your rights that you have had as an American, and that you have to learn to get in line and to follow one ruler. Don't question, just do as you're told. See, God did not create society to function that way, did he? No, he did not. No, he did not. If you read the Bible, look, look, look at Abraham. Look at the camp of Abraham. How did he run his family? He led them. He did not rule his family. You know, you, you, look, you, look, at, you look at Moses. He did not rule over them. He led them. He led them. And that's why this nation was so prosperous for a long time. We were led. We were led. And we, we did the right thing for the most part. But now we are a totally different nation. And so sadly, other Western nations, allies of America, will follow in the same manner. They will also fall. Because we're walking away from the Word of God. We're walking away from Jesus Christ. Yes, we have never been a Christian nation, but we were a lot closer to the cross as a nation than other nations have ever been. And my hope is not in America. My hope is in Jesus. But we do have to speak about what is happening in our home. The evils of the world, the epidemics, the elitists, the globalists, food crisis, oh, you have no idea what is looming right now on the horizon of the world in regards to food crisis. You have no idea how, how this made-up food crisis is going to come, and it's going to hit hard worldwide. The Bible says in the book of Revelation, it says a, 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 a quart of wheat for this much and so much for this much, but do not damage the oil and the wine. Why is that? Meaning the rich will always have what they need, but everyone's going to have to pay a whole lot of money for just a little bit of this and a little bit of that. We have a Shell gas card. And Anna goes, oh my goodness, the gas bill is this much? I'm like, yes. <laughs> it is doubled. It's doubled. Financial crisis here, coming, all over. Spending carelessly. Our government spending careless money. All of them. Spending money carelessly putting us further into debt as a nation. The Bible talks about that. What, what does the Bible say? He says that you will not be a, a, a borrower, but you will be a lender when you follow the ways of God. The Old Testament teaches us that. And, and we've been giving and giving, and now what we are in debt as a nation. Another major world war is on the horizon. It's been looming. You know, whenever World War I and World War II started, before America got involved, there were other wars in the world that began to happen. And that is exactly what we see happening right now. There are other little things happening. And it's going to bring all nations into this major world war that is coming up. I don't know what the name of this war is. I don't know if it's the Ezekiel War. I don't know if it's World War III. But it is a major world war that is coming. Sexual trafficking. People think that that was long and done away with. Sexual trafficking is greater than you think it is. We've seen all of these young kids and young, young people vanishing, uh, vanishing, disappearing. 
only to find out they've been in sexual rings caught up all over the world, nations trafficking the souls of young people for perverted sex. And this is greater than you think. And it's happening all over the world. And most of them are coming right here to America. Right under your noses. And that's why I've said the greatest mission field is in America. Not in India. Not in China. In America. And yet so many Christians are just too busy with their jobs. Trying to make ends meet. Not realizing that they can become some of the great missionaries of the Church of Jesus Christ. Abortion. The greatest plague on America. The greatest, I'm sorry, not plague, but the greatest stain on America. Since the Bible teaches us in the book of Jeremiah that God knitted not only Jeremiah, but every one of us in the womb of our mothers. Amen. Why would anyone choose to kill his creation? It is only those who do not fear God the Creator. The agenda is to kill, steal, and destroy, just as their father Satan. He has done this from the beginning. Those who have ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And all Satan desires to do is he desires to kill people. The globalists, the elitists, the wealthy in this world have one ideology, and that is to eliminate, cut down the population, on the outside, they seem to want to share with humanitarian causes in helping to feed the hungry and eliminate epidemics, but underneath they are the root causes of these things that are plaguing the world today. And they have billions of dollars to do this. And they are doing it. The Purpose Driven Life, Rick Warren, who believes in bringing Christianity and Islam together, the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 6 says, what does light and darkness have in common? Have nothing to do with this. Paul wrote this. What does the house of God have to do with, 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 with demonic things? 2 Corinthians chapter 6. And yet we have one of the great pastors in America, Rick Warren, who has been an influence in the church in America for over 20 plus years, wrote some of the biggest books of all time, The Purpose Driven Life, where he teaches churches how we ought to live our lives. And yet, behind the scenes, he is working with these billionaires to bring humanitarian causes, uh, re relief effort, uh, helping people that in epidemic plague field countries, and, and bringing other religions together. When, when, when how, how can, you know, the Bible, Jesus said, you know a tree you, you, by, by its fruit. And when you're hanging out with these people and you're associating with these people, who have an, uh, an ulterior motive and agenda. And you see, because it's working, because how many have died since this latest epidemic? How many have died because of all the billionaires that put their money to go tell people to go protest and, and go riot in the streets and to overthrow things and, and to burn down buildings? How many people have lost their lives? That This is destroying people's livelihood and lives. It's creating murder in the hearts of people to just hate and hate and hate. And yet you're going to have a pastor like this who's going to be friends with these people. It's no wonder why his son committed suicide. Because his son was, his son was what? They all say mentally unstable? No. Now, I think sometimes things happen and you had nothing to do with the, what your children did. But I believe on, on Rick Warren's scale, I believe he needs to repent of his sins. Because if you can say, Michael, you're very harsh. No, look at his fruit. Look at what he has taught. Look at the damage he has done. Right under the noses of the Christians in America. It's sad. It's sad. He might not care for your soul, but I care for your soul. The Pharisees were the same way. They wanted to rule. They did not want to lead. Caesar was the same way. He ruled. He did not want to lead. And again, that's why America was so prosperous, because we had men that wanted to lead, not rule. George Washington did not want to rule. He did not even want to be the president. Many of these early fathers, they understood this principle. They had a heart of humility. Not all of them were Christians, 
But God, if he could work with Pharaoh, if God could work with Nebuchadnezzar, then God could work with men that were far, far away from the things of wickedness, and he could really speak to their hearts, and that is exactly what he did. But fast forward a couple hundred years now, we're so far from the cross. We need to speak of the facts and not opinions. Now the word of God is the fact. And those who have ears will hear what is being said from this very pulpit. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 says, He that are spiritual, they judge all things. That's in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Those who are spiritual, they can judge all things. And no one can judge us. Why? Because we've already been judged by Christ. And the Bible says at the end of 1 Corinthians 2, chapter 2, that we have the mind of Christ. We're able to evaluate all things. We're able to have discernment. We may not always agree, but we understand what is happening in this world. Now in Matthew 6, 31 through 33, Jesus says, Do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? Matthew 6, 33, For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows you need all these things, but seek the first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. If you do not seek the kingdom, and if you do not seek his righteousness, then you will have subtraction in your life. Do you see that? You just flipped it. But if you do seek, you will have addition in your life. Those are the words of Jesus. The addition of what? Money? No. The addition of everything that he knows that you need. But the world is trying to tell you something totally different. You got to work. You got to do this. Because why? Because you have to, everything you do has to support the rulers. You work your fingers to the bone and you know what all you get? Bony fingers. That's a song, by the way. It's an old country song. That's all you get. So, I wrote here, give to Caesar what is Caesar, but give to God what belongs to God. We are living in that hour. Psalm 45, 6 says this, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. Amen? His throne is forever. America is not forever. China is not forever. Russia is not forever. Iran is not forever. But his kingdom is forever. And you know what, Christian? Look at the Christian next to you. That is the kingdom right there. Amen? That is the kingdom right there. The body of Christ. We make up the kingdom of God. It's in our hearts. It's in our mind. It consumes us. It leads us. It frees us. The kingdom of God sustains us. We seek Him and all of our needs are met. That's why I'm always pushing. Read the Bible for yourself. Stop listening to all these different voices out there. Study the Word of God. Listen to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is like, you're listening to them again? Listen to me. And I remember first early up in my Christian walk, I was um, studying the prophetic word for the first time. And I, I, I don't want to tell you, I was up till four in the morning, late, then go to work, just studying the word. And I told Anna, I can't understand this. And this is just, you know, I'm reading this and I'm studying. And, and I began to want to look on the internet for other people's opinions and stuff. And the Holy Spirit said, why don't you just ask me? I mean, real loud in my heart, not an audible voice. He said, why don't you just ask me? And I, I was like, oh my goodness. And you know what? Things become, became more clear for me to understand in the written word. And, and to this day, ask him. Seek his advice on this. Help me to understand, Lord. Sometimes you may not be able to understand. That's okay. Down the road, you will understand. Because that is what happened to the disciples. Jesus would tell them something, and later on, they got it. Later on, they said, oh, now I get it. Amen. Our last scripture, before I go any further, 1 Peter 2, 9 through 17, we'll go in there in just a moment. But the evils in this world are real. The evils in this world will never go away. The evils in this world, they want the Christian ideology, the Christian to die out. 
and they think we're going to die out. But they're sadly mistaken. We will never, ever die out. We will live forever and ever because Christ lives in us. And that's the joy that we have. That's the assurance that we have. Don't ever let no one tell you anything different. Because if they do, they're a liar. God is the truth. Jesus' word is the truth. And so, what the early church prayed for in the book of Acts, when we've been studying on Friday night services, is they prayed for boldness. Do you pray for boldness? Because that is what you need if you're going to live in this world today as a Christian. Peter and John went before the Pharisees and they were beaten and they were ridiculed and mocked. And as soon as they walked away from that, they went to the house of the believers and they all rejoiced for they had been counted worthy to suffer for Jesus, but they began to pray for boldness. You know, read that in its context of that chapter in Acts 2 and 3 and 4, all of that, that they prayed for boldness. Why? Because they knew that with what they were getting into, it was going to require their life. Everything. How much more now? How greater now is the enemy that we face that's, that's more alert, more alive, and more bigger than the days of the apostles? Jesus said it, because of the increase of wickedness, the love of many will grow cold in the last days. Jesus says about this in Matthew 24. He says, because of the last days, he said, if he does not cut these days short, no one will survive. But for the sake of the elect, Jesus will cut these days short. Meaning, the devil's not going to reign very long in the tribulation age. And what we see happening right now is not going to continue for many, 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 many more years. I fully believe with all my heart that we're in the last hours. I don't know how long that is. But I believe that, that everything is set in place worldwide. Sin cannot cover itself any longer. Everything's being exposed. We've seen politicians being exposed. We've seen cover-ups for years that have been covered up now being exposed. We've seen false preachers being exposed. We've seen preachers that weren't living right being exposed. We've seen all kinds of things happening now. Amen? Everything's being exposed. Why? Because that is what usually happens before the judgment of God would come. And that's what's happening now. God does not want anyone to perish, but He disciplines those He loves. And that is what we see happening in this nation. God is exposing all of this stuff. And people are waking up. People are saying, Oh my goodness, they've been lying to us. Everybody's lying to us. And so, because of that, they question everybody and they think everybody's a liar. But that's where we have to come in and say, no, there's only one who has told the truth, who's always told the truth, because he is the truth, and his name is Jesus. Amen. But if you don't know the truth yourself, how can you tell them about the truth? Pray for boldness. Examine your heart. Be sure you're in the faith. Isn't that what Paul writes? Be sure that you're in the faith. And Paul says, and I trust that you are in the faith and that you will pass the test. Because as Christians, we're all being put to the test. God will test us and the devil will tempt us. God loves all races. God loves all the nations. But we're in this nation. This is our home. This is our backyard. And we have to be the greatest missionaries that the church has ever seen right here in America. Right here. Right here. This is your opportunity. This is your opportunity. And everything I've just read, I want to sum it all up in Scripture. That's what I like to do. Because if what I say is not backed up by Scripture, then it's just opinions. But here's what Peter says in 1 Peter 2, 9-17. This is what he says in context of what I've said for the past 40 plus minutes. He says, but you are not like that, meaning evil people. Peter says, he speaks to the Christian, he says, for you are a chosen people. You are a royal priest, a holy nation, God's very own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God. For he called you out of the darkness and into his wonderful light. 
Once you had no identity as a people, now you are God's people. Once you received no mercy, now you have received mercy, God's mercy. Dear friends, I warn you as temporary residents and foreigners to keep away from worldly desires that wage war against your very souls. Be careful to live properly among your unbelieving neighbors. Then, even if they accuse you of doing wrong, they will see your honorable behavior, and they will give honor to God when he judges the world. For the Lord's sake, submit to all human authority, whether the king as head of state or the officials he has appointed. For the king has sent them to punish those who do wrong and to honor those who do right. It is God's will that your honorable lives should silence those ignorant people who make foolish accusations against you. For you are free, yet you are God's slaves. So don't use your freedom as an excuse to do evil. Respect everyone and love the family of believers. Fear God and respect the king. God knew that the nations would eventually have kings. God knew this. He's the beginning and the end. And so there would be good people put in place and there would be bad people put in place. What do I mean by that? That in the history of nations, you will have rulers and then you will have leaders. God knew this. And so that's why God said, respect them. But before, he said, pull that last verse up, could you please? Before we are to respect these kings, the first thing is, look, fear God. And if these leaders, if these rulers have no fear of God, then what do you do? You don't ever speak evil of anybody, especially those that are in authority. They tell you to pay taxes. Well, you, just, you have to pay these taxes. You have to do what they say. But if they tell you to do something that is totally evil in the eyes of God, do, does that mean you have to do that too? Absolutely not. The Bible is not contradicting itself here. But we have to understand that as Christians, we have to be as innocent as doves, but be shrewd as serpents. What does that mean? We have to understand how to apply the Word of God in every situation. And in regards to our nation, in regards to government, we have to understand that we fear God, we respect the King, and that's why I have a really, I have a really, um, it really irks me. Personally, this is just me. It really rubs me the wrong way when Christians talk so wicked and evil of leaders, rulers, and just dehumanize them. That's wrong. It's wrong. And how can God hear your prayers if you're making fun of Nancy Pelosi? How can God hear your prayers when you're going to pray for this situation, but yet you're, you're, you're down, downing Joe Biden or Donald Trump? Any of these people. How can God hear your prayers? And so we have to understand that. We have to respect God. God knows all this stuff. God knows who was in place before they even were put in place. God knows all the wars that were going to happen. God knows all the murders that were going to happen. God knows all the abortions that were going to happen. But so what do we do? We have to understand. Look, we cannot live foolishly. We, look, look, it says, be very careful how you live your lives. If you know the Word of God, if you are a student of the Holy Bible, you're going to know how to handle yourself. And even then, knowing the Bible, it's still difficult to make right decisions sometimes. But I, I just want to encourage Grace Christian Center, study the Bible, know the Word, and know the voice of the Holy Spirit. In doing that, He'll lead you to everything you need to do. Amen? Look, this government was their God. But God is our government. Jesus is our government. Amen. He governs our lives. He leads us. And that's what Jesus said, if you want to follow me. He didn't say, I'm going to make you follow me. Jesus didn't say, I I'm going to put this burden on you. Jesus said, cast all your burdens on me. If anyone wants to follow me, he gave an invite. But the leaders of this world, they're forcing all these things upon you. And so here's what I want to leave you with. When the politicians, when all these leaders, whether they're from any nation, when they force you, when they put something on you, and it especially goes against the Word of God, you know what spirit they're coming from. 
you know. It's the spirit of Antichrist. Because God will never force anything on you. Never. Never. And, and you see it, for example, in the case of abortion. All of these people protesting, mad because Roe v. Wade was overturned. Because in their heart, they want that freedom to be able to choose whatever they want. And, and if it's murder, then we can murder. It's not a newborn life, but the Bible says it is. The Bible says that God says, I knitted you in the womb of your mother. God put you together as a baby in your mama's belly. That was the creation of God. And so when unbelievers want to kill that, they're really wanting to destroy the work of God. And so you now know where they're coming from. They're being instigated, led by wicked politicians. Let's get smart about this. No Democrats or Republicans here, but let's get smart about this. And that translates to every other wickedness that we're facing with in this nation today. Racial hatred, social uh, 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 class division, you know, the poor, the rich, all of this. I mean, going through Third Ward yesterday, I, I saw how people look at you weird because you're not like them. <laughs> and I was like, oh my goodness, they look, man, looks could kill us. I mean, seriously, we turned a corner and I kind of slowed down and these guys at the corner just looked at us like that. And I'm like, oh my goodness. God loves them too. Jesus loves them too. We go into downtown Houston and there's homeless people there begging for money on the streets. And then we just drive another mile and then we're in the rich part of town. I mean, it's everywhere. We're surrounded by all of this. Let the light of Christ shine in your life, church. Let God lead you, not men. Receive this word in Jesus' name. Give him praise. Amen.